rice or cereal dispensers. This is something that I feel like has been coming more and more popular over the years and I want to blame all of the must-have Amazon hauls on YouTube and there's a lot of them on Instagram Reels, TikTok, so you see these cereal and rice dispensers everywhere lately and they aren't cheap and even if they were cheap, I just don't think that they're worth your hard-earned money. The main reason is that it takes up a lot of space. And most of those cereal and rice dispensers come with two or three and you need counter space for that. Unless you are lucky and you have your separate little pantry, go for it. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. But when it comes to those that live in a smaller place, like myself, I feel like these things are just pointless to have. They cause a lot of clutter and it's just another product that's just a waste of money. And you're probably going to get rid of it or declutter it within like a year or two because it's just one of those random items that you don't really need. Bamboo cover organizers. Don't get me wrong, I think they look beautiful, very aesthetically pleasing, but hear me out. Those bamboo lids, I don't know what it is, and I have tried a few brands back then, so it wasn't necessarily a particular brand, but most of them are really hard to clean. I've tried everything to clean those, and when a couple months pass, those bamboo like underneath of them would get really black and they would smell really, really bad. And not to mention the suction around them, it wouldn't like close after a year. So yes, they are beautiful, but I just don't think that they're worth the money or worth your money period to purchase these and bring them into your house and use them for food or use them for anything. I think regular containers or Reusing your mason jars work 10 times better than purchasing these bamboo aesthetically pleasing containers. Scent beads for the washer. Now I grew up with my mom always using scent beads and I never questioned it until I moved out on my own and realized like, wait a minute, I'm paying for laundry soap that is already scented and then I'm paying for scented beads? Hold up, this is like backwards. I'm wasting money here. If you feel like your detergent isn't working as well and your clothes aren't smelling clean or fresh, so then you get scented beads to enhance that smell, then basically the main problem is your laundry soap. I think the whole scent beads is just an extra thing that you really do not need to purchase. I know a lot of people are obsessed with them. My sisters love and swear by their scent beads and their laundry smells exactly like mine. And I do use the tie pods i know i know they're not the best but it's literally what works for me and my boyfriend since we have been working out a lot more and it's what gets the sweat stains and the smell out my sisters also use the same tie pods and they also use the scent beads and their clothes still smell like mine but i didn't purchase any scent beads so i just think that it's just another gimmick it's another thing that you guys do not need to waste your money on again like i said before get down to the main problem which could be your laundry soap maybe look for something that has a long longer lasting smell so you do not have to purchase additional laundry items to make your clothes smell good it's literally cutting your laundry bill in half fancy trash cans the fancy trash cans are cool, you know, when you put your hand over them and they open by themselves. They are cool, I'm not gonna lie. But are they necessary? No, they are not necessary. I think the price of these fancy trash cans are just outrageous. I don't see myself ever purchasing a trash can that's $100 or $200 or $300. That's the same exact size as the one I have or been having since 2018. And the only difference is that you plug it into the wall and it opens up by itself. Technically speaking, mine also opens up by itself because it has like that foot pedal thing at the bottom. And I think those are just perfect. You're still not touching the bin. Um, you just push it down with your foot, that pedal, and then that's it. You throw your trash out. I just don't think that fancy trash cans are necessary. Yes, they are super sleek looking. I will give them that. The design on these trash cans, the smart ones, are beautiful. But like I said, it's just not necessary. $100, $200 when you can spend $20 to $40 on a regular trash can that can last you years and years to come. Like I was saying, I've had mine since 2018 and we still have it. It's in the kitchen right now as we speak. 
I clean it once a month. I deep clean it in the tub, put some soap and water, let it sit, put it back in the kitchen once when it's dried, and that's it. I don't know if you can actually deep clean a smart trash can now that I think of it. I don't think you can deep clean it like how I deep clean my regular one because wouldn't it have a moda. So that's another thing to think about if you're going to dish out that kind of money for something that's going to open up by itself. Giant treadmills or giant workout gear. I will say unless you have a designated spot in your house for a workout area, go for it. Trust me, if like the house, whatever house we end up getting in the future, if it comes with a spare room for a gym, then we will purchase a decent treadmill and all of that stuff because it would be worth it. There's a designated spot to work out. But when it comes to living in a small apartment like this, having a giant treadmill can decrease the space that we have or that you have. And I do have a treadmill, but it's an apartment size one. It's small, it doesn't have any handlebars. It has wheels where I can just, you know, drive it wherever I want it to be. If I wanna go work out in the living room today, then I can go bring the treadmill into the living room. It's super light, it's only like 25 to 30 pounds, super light. And compared to the bigger treadmills or the bigger workout gear, you can't really move them around as much if you want to. And growing up, I have seen so many family members use their treadmill for coat hangers. And I feel like when things are on your treadmill, it's you know out of sight, out of mind. You don't wanna use a treadmill because sometimes you can't even see it because there's so much stuff on it. So it becomes an object in the way. So in my opinion, I don't think giant treadmills are worth it unless you have a designated spot to put it. Brand logos on your clothes. I am a little biased with this as well, but hear me out you guys. This is for a really good reason. So when it comes to wearing logos on your clothes, it's technically free advertisement for those big companies such as Nike, such as Chanel, Louis Vuitton. I know it's also a status symbol as well, but please keep in mind that these brands do not even care about your existence. They do not pay you to wear their logo. You actually are paying them to advertise for them. So once when I realized that, I got rid of all of the things that had a logo on my clothing items. As you guys can see, I'm wearing a regular shirt. No logo. I haven't worn like a Nike logo or anything like that in years. If I was to wear a logo, it will be to promote me and not to promote a brand or a company that doesn't really care about me. I get it if you like the material. Trust me, I have been there where I love the material and what I ended up doing is I looked up what the material was made out of. So say it was like, this is just an example, I'm not doing correct math, but 75% polyester and like 25% um, cotton or spandex. I look up that particular shirt or pants ingredients and put it online and you will see a bunch of clothing items come up with the same material that you like but without a logo. So do me a favor, pause this video right now, go through your closet and see how much average free advertising you guys are doing for the brands that you have or the brands that you purchase. I bet you it's a lot because trust me, I was a walking Nike billboard for the longest time. I had Nike shirt, Nike pants, shoes, sports bra. You would think I was sponsored with them when I was like, what, 21, 22? And like I said, they don't even know of my existence and I highly doubt that they would even pay me to wear their stuff. I highly doubt any of these companies would pay their consumers to wear their stuff. It's like the opposite way around. We are actually paying them to advertise for them. High-end makeup. This is another thing where it comes to logos and brands. I know some high-end makeup is amazing and I think the quality sometimes can outweigh the price tag, but there is a lot of drugstore makeup that works just as good as high-end. And I mean, nowadays we have YouTube, we have Instagram Reels, where we can see the difference. I've seen a lot of girls do like drugstore makeup on this side, high-end on this side. You cannot even tell the difference. And to me, I am not into that makeup world anymore. I have a little bit of lip gloss on, eyeshadow, and a tiny bit of Mascara. That's it. I have nothing on my face. Kind of got out of that makeup world a long time ago. Um, I just 
do what works best for me to enhance my natural beauty but I know that's not everybody and that's perfectly fine if you are into makeup then that's okay but I just think that high-end makeup isn't always worth the high-end price you can find cheaper makeup that works just as good if not better and I will say this as well I know a lot of you guys aren't vegan or you know you're not into that lifestyle and I get it everybody does their own thing I don't judge please try to purchase cruelty free products including makeup um, elf is cruelty free elate cosmetics pacifica beauty there's a lot of cruelty free makeup companies out there that work just as well if not better than your chanel and dior and all that other crap those companies test on animals if you guys do not know what they do to these animals look it up go on google educate yourself google it it's honestly horrifying so when it comes to most high-end makeup most of those high-end companies test on animals still. So please, please keep that in mind and try your best to do your research, your own research and switch over to cruelty-free makeup. So with all of that being said, high-end makeup isn't always worth the high-end price. Anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want me to continue this series because there are so many other popular products out there that I would love to discuss more on. Please do not forget to like and subscribe down below and I will catch you in the next one.